Hey everybody, in this video, as you might have guessed by the title, I'm going to be talking about the new Killing Floor 2 update, the Descent Content Pack. There are quite a few very cool things added, so let's not waste any time and get right into it. First things first, let's start off with the simple stuff of the maps. First one that we're going to be looking at is called Nuked, and this used to be a community map made in the workshop by Matt, I think his name is, and it's a really good map, the devs liked it, so they decided to add it into the game for everyone to enjoy. As you can tell, this is pretty much a burnt and broken down city in the wake of a nuclear attack. And what I like about this map is that just like Zed Landing, it changes throughout the game. As you can see in the video, I'm on the third out of the seven waves, and in the distance there is a nuke that drops, you can see that there is wind and dust flying towards you, uh, the, the sky gets darker, and it kind of just changes the entire feeling of the map. And just like all the other maps, you can run around and get the collectibles, this time there are little blue nukes which are fairly easy to see and they're spaced out all over the place and I don't think you'll need to look up a guide for these because like I said, they are fairly easy to see so you should be able to find them on your own. Overall, it's a very well designed map, it's got a lot of cool stuff in it, I think the basement looks really nice and creepy and I think it fits right into the feeling that Killing Floor is going for. Next up we've got our new map called The Descent which also ties into our new game mode called Holdout. What is this cool new game mode you might be asking? Well, it's pretty much just survival, except each wave you're fighting in a different room. So as you might see in the videos, I'm jumping into tunnels and then the setting changes. The cool thing about this is that all of it is random. There are 10 different rooms, but they come in random order. What I mean by that is you can have one room on wave 2, and then the next time you play, your wave 2 might be a different room. So it kind of keeps things fresh. The thing that stays the same is always your starting room, and your ending room. If I didn't explain it well enough, I'm sure that if you keep watching the video, you'll understand it more. Overall, I think that this game mode is a very nice addition to Killing Floor. It keeps survival fresh by changing the location of every wave, which makes every experience you have on these maps different. Personally, I can't wait to see what Tripart does with this game mode and what kind of maps they're going to be releasing for it in the future. Now let's talk a little bit about the map itself. From what I've played, I can see that every room is very well designed and that Tripart paid attention to all the little details. Visually, each room is different in its own way, and it has things that keep it interesting and original. And I think it's important to talk about the map in a gameplay sense, and not just talk about the visuals. So, what do I think of the gameplay on this? I think that every uh, room is different, but some rooms are definitely easier than others. As you can see from the gameplay, some rooms are open and you have a lot of room to run around, or you have a good spot to sit down, but there are some specific rooms, especially the especially the room with the lava pool and the staircase. Personally, I find that room very annoying, simply because of the fact that it's so small. When you're playing it on, I don't know, um, the top waves and you get a few flesh pounds or some husks that spawn, and you've got like two flesh pounds, three husks in that little room, it's very difficult to survive and I found that if I do die while playing this map, it's usually on that specific room. So yeah, definitely some rooms are much easier than others. And another thing I've noticed is that this game mode is kind of difficult for solo play. Uh, I noticed that if I do want to play it solo, I pretty much have to just run circles around the map and hope to god that I don't get caught in between something. But the nice thing is that less Zeds do spawn, so it's kind of a trade-off. And before we start talking about the weapons, I will say that just like all the other maps, this map does have a collectibles, and there's usually about two or three collectibles in every room. What you're looking for is like a golden Hans, I think it's like a plushie or something, and they're usually placed in pretty visible locations, so like I said before, I don't think you'll need to look up a guide for these ones. On that note, we're now done with the maps, and just to recap, I think both of them look amazing visually, you can see a lot of detail, and you can tell people put a lot of time into making these maps. Gameplay wise, I think that both of the maps are really good as well, but one comment I do have is that on the descent, some rooms might need a little bit of tweaking because I can see how overwhelming they can get, especially as the difficulty increases. This is also seen on solo play, and yeah, I've already talked about that, let's get into the weapons. The first new weapon we've got is the classic that's been brought back from Killing Floor 1. These are the Spitfire Pistols, also known as the Flare Revolvers. This is a tier 2 weapon and you can buy this at the trader for 650 doge. They also only have a weight of 4, which makes it a pretty nice sidearm. Originally this used to be just a firebug weapon, but due to the cross perk system, you can also use this weapon with the sharpshooter and the gunslinger. For the firebug this makes a nice alternative secondary, and now you can choose between this and the trench gun when you're using stuff like the uh, flamethrower and the microwave gun. 
for the sharpshooter this makes a good secondary if you are going to be using the railgun and as you can see in the video I'm using it on the gunslinger making it a good alternative to the M1911s. Overall this is a very fun weapon to use and I think it's a great addition to the perks I've mentioned. It allows them to have a wider choice of weapons when going out there on the battlefield. The next new weapon we've got is the Stoner 63A. This is a tier 4 command weapon worth 1500 dosh with a weight of 9. What makes this weapon good is its high fire rate and its high ammo capacity. As you can see in the video, my commando skills are selected for a high clip and not a quick reload. So that's why the clip size is 188 bullets, making this thing an absolute monster. What this does is it pretty much allows me to keep firing long without any reloads and dish out a lot of damage in a short period of time. As you can see from the videos, this weapon is amazing at killing large groups of Zeds because you can just keep firing and that damage doesn't stop. You are in kind of a situation though when you have to reload it which does take a little bit so it's helpful if you have teammates to cover you while you're doing that. And just as a side note, I'm not telling you to always take bigger mags with this, I just did it because I thought it'd be fun and to see how big the mag size would get and what I can do with it. Personally, I usually take fast reload, but that's for another video. So overall, what do I think of this weapon? I think that it's very fun to use, you feel very badass while doing it, you feel like Rambo as you're mowing Zeds down, and only having a weight of 9 allows you to take either the SCAR or the AK with it, making it a high contender for a new commando loadout. This weapon is amazing at killing trash sets and does a fair amount of damage to the bigger sets as well. The only downside to this weapon is its bad accuracy, but you can contain that fairly well if you take the right skill and you do burst fire instead of full auto. And by that I mean you burst fire yourself because this weapon doesn't actually have any different firing modes. And on that note I think we've covered all of the weapons, there's not much that I can say about them other than they're fun, they deal a good amount of damage so I think we'll see people using them a lot. It's kind of hard for me to describe to you these weapons by just speaking, so I think it's better if you actually go into game and try them out for yourself. And we also can't forget that there's also been an update to the Zed economy, adding in pretty cool looking hats, new weapon skins and also skins for the newly released Spitfire. There are also new precious gold skins added, so that's something to look out for as well. And also don't forget to check out the newly released comic, which will be linked in the description. And that pretty much covers all of the big updates. There are also a bunch of bug fixes, which I will link in the description if you want to check those out. And I think that's it for the video. Remember that if you enjoyed the video and it helped you out, then do leave a like, it helps me out. If you want to check out more videos like my Killing Floor Tactics playlist, that's in the description as well. It's pretty much a bunch of guides so you can get better at the game. And if you enjoy my content and you want to see more, then either follow me on Twitter or just subscribe to the channel to stay up to date. I hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching and have a great day.